Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Nicolò tries to do something useful for KDE in a totally new and different way by making an application for it. So that is actually something I never did, like I did some contributions to other KDE applications, but usually not even that, like my main field of work is KDE Plasma, which is the desktop and usually just the panel actually, because that's where most of my work goes and you know, stuff that goes inside the panel, so widgets, that's what I usually do. But, um, you know, I had to do a different project for this time. I'm still working on the panel quarry, but at the same time, I've been preparing this other thing. So this is an application for KDE, uh, in theory, if everything goes well, that's a big if, and it should be an EPUB reader. Now, you might ask, why does KDE need yet another application to read EPUBs? And the answer is that, um, surprisingly enough, currently no KDE ap application that I know of, maybe I missed some, but no KDE application that I know of can read EPUBs. Now, there is a plugin for Ocular. The problem is that it uses a very, 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 very old library for reading EPUBs that mostly doesn't support anything. So what you get is not pretty. And of course you lack everything that you uh, are supposed to find in an EPUB reader, like the ability to change the colors. Maybe you like dark mode better or sepia. And also the ability to change the text size, this kind of things are pretty important in an EPUB reader, Ocular doesn't have them. So um, I've actually been asked a lot to do videos on how, explaining how to do KDE applets or how to do KDE applications and usually I can't really act on that because that is such a wide uh, range of topics to cover and it really depends on what you're trying to do. But I can talk and show you how I'm doing my thing. But keep in mind that again, this is not something that I usually do. Usually I work I'm working on something else entirely, but nonetheless, I do know some stuff. So uh, it may be invite me. I hope it is a learning experience for you too, to a certain extent. So this is my test EPUB. Uh, sorry, this is my test EPUB. It's a great book. I suggest you that you all read it if you're into it. This is EPUB.js. EPUB.js is a library for reading EPUBs that is based on JavaScript. And it's kind of the standard nowadays, I think. Like I've seen multiple EPUB readers in the Linux, Linux world use it. I'm using as a reference for Liate, I think it's called, which does that, like it reads EPUBs. This is introduction to topology as an example. And this uses EPUB.js and you can see that you have options such as changing the colors, which is again, not something you have in Ocular. Then what else? Um, there's also the elementary OS uh, EPUB reader, whose name I currently forgot. They also use EPUB.js. I haven't used them much because because I'm trying to read the source code of those projects to learn from it, but the elementary OS application source code is not for me. Like I, I don't understand anything. Foli Foliati is slightly easier, so I, I can kind of get a screen on. This is because apap.js, in my very frank opinion, has terrible documentation. Like I cannot understand barely anything of how it's supposed to be used. So this is actually why I'm doing progress so slowly, but let me finally show you four minutes in what I have so far. This is just, you know, raw stuff that I'm working. So uh, you can see that you do have the first page. Uh, you do have the ebook title. No, you don't actually, but you do have the first page, which, which is great. And with these two arrows, you can switch just. So right now you like, I'm covering basic functionalities, but you know, I'm trying. And uh, the next step after being able to switch pages for me is being able to show the progress on this slider and, you know, being able to set the slider, but now it doesn't do anything. I'm just working on it. So how does this work code wise? Let's Let's see very quickly the code. It's nothing particularly fancy. Again, it's me trying. So first you, we have an HTML file because epub.js is meant to be used in like a web page. So what we do is that we actually have an, a web page where we use epub.js and then we embed that web page inside the view of the crew game application. Now this is very different from doing something like Electron where the whole UI is a web page. I'm not doing that. Obviously 
closely. It's just what you see as the EPUB, which is an embedded um, web view. So nothing particularly fancy. We have a div, which is an area which covers the entire screen where we actually render the EPUB. We load the this thing, which um, I kind of forgot about. Uh, maybe it's not necessary. Like I probably don't want to have this. I, I think it's for unzipping the some compressed EPUBs. I completely forgot about this, sorry. Then we load, you know, EPUB.js. We create an EPUB uh, object reading the test EPUB. We create a rendition um, object, which is the thing that actually uh, manages the rendering of the EPUB. And we tell it to render it to area, which is this thing. I could probably just say document body instead of area. I think I'm still learning. That's something to be uh, investigated. Flow paginated, which means that uh, you have like pages. Uh, I didn't show this, but if you resize uh, this window, it will become multiple pages like this. So that's pretty, I think. And this is what uh, is meant with paginated. And I also tell it, um, please don't use more than two columns, which is just a random value right now. I have nothing, I guess, like four pages if you have very big monitors. It's just around right now. And then uh, we get this displayed uh, object, which was in the documentation. I have no clue right now how to use it, I think. So right now I'm not doing anything to it. Then we have a test function because I was trying out how I was testing some of the objects to try to learn from them. This is just the web view. Now we get to the actual application, which is a Kurigami application. And this is the most basic stuff. You have an application window, you set some sizes, um, and then you have page stack, which is like the pages of the application. If you add something to the page stack, it adds a page to the right, which um, for you it's here. So, you know, if you use Kurigami applications, you know what I'm talking about. So we just set an initial page, which is probably the only page I'll ever need for this application. This is supposed to be simple and easy and everything. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm not doing a mess. <laughs> so we set the title, which in the future will actually be the title of the ebook in theory. And then we take off all the padding because by default, we do have some padding on top, left, bottom by default. We don't want that. We want the web view to touch the borders. So I just go with that. And then we add the two bat buttons that are on the top bar. Um, we set the arrows. This is on the right. Um, this is pointing on the right. This is pointing on the left. This is the action on the right. This is the action on the left, obviously. When this is trigger, we call view next, which I'll get to. When this is trigger, uh, we'll call, now it's a test, but uh, it's view, sorry prep, which uh, these two functions will change the pages. We'll see now how. Here we have a column layout, which is completely useless, actually. <laughs> that, that was um, a mistake of mine. I don't actually need it. But uh, what is important is this element, which is the web engine view. It's actually the web page we just saw, but embedded in this component. And we're just saying, you know, fill all the width, fill all the height. You got to be as big as you want, like try to be as big as you want. The URL of the HTML file is here. Now, in theory, I guess I shouldn't even rely on an external .html file and I should just create the DOM instead, like the relevant elements inside of here. And then I can just run the JavaScript that you see here, but directly here. I guess that's another way to do it. Probably a better way. I will investigate. Again, I'm just trying to get things work. Then we'll see how to make them pretty. I also saw that for some reason, um, this object only gives me the errors that we get here. But if if I have console.logs that gets ignored for some reason. So on, with this on JavaScript console message, console.log message, this actually uh, shows me every uh, message that I console log inside of here, which is nice. And finally, we have the two functions that I talked about, which are our next and prev to change pages. And this just run some JavaScript inside of here because of course rendition, which is and the book, uh, all these important things are inside main.html. So if I want to do anything, I got to run some JavaScript inside of here. And um, easy enough, I just called rendition.next and .rev, which change the pages. Now, then I will have to do some more complex stuff. I'm not exactly sure how yet, obviously, especially because to be honest, the documentation just, I don't understand anything. I'm trying, I'm trying.
And then finally, we have a footer, which is on the bottom with a slider. We add some padding around it, otherwise it's too cramped. And then we tell it to be as wide as possible. And in the future, I want like my next goal is to be able to read at like how many pages are there, what percentage are we currently of the book. But the point is that it's very difficult to talk about pages for an EPUB. Like an EPUB itself, I think it doesn't actually have pages. Uh, it really depends on how you display it, like the size of the window and the size of the font, these kind of things. So pages should probably be dynamically calculated. And I think EPUB.j yes does that i just haven't understood how but something i'm learning from is that there's this uh, cfi i think it's called way to express uh, precise locations inside of uh, epub and then i do see lots of uh, methods called like percentage from C cfi i've understood how to calculate where what cfi i'm currently displaying which is great i haven't understood how to get a percentage out of the cfi and um, of course i cannot get the general idea of a CFI, but it's weird. Uh, uh, can I show it? I think I can show it. Like here, I can console here. Yes. So what I can do is take uh, the element that manages the rendering, take the location uh, of it. Now, location has start and end because um, I guess that, you know, the point, I, I think that start, start refers to the, like, the first line that you're rendering and, and the last line, these kind of things. I take the last point, just I think it's the same. And then I take the CFI and this actually works. And um, I uh, this test function now is called as a debugging way when I click on the left button. And if I get back to here, you can see that uh, if I press left, it tells me, yes, EPUB, um, EPUB CFI 6, 8, 4, 28, 2, 1, 18. Okay, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna trust you. Like I get the general idea, <laughs> but I have no clue what those, all of those elements actually mean stuff like 118 maybe this is a range i don't know i'm <laughs> i'm not an epub expert i'm just trying to do something <laughs> so are you an epub expert trudy canavan please don't sue me I, I don't think it's illegal to show a couple of pages from the book like just as an example on how the application works i don't but, but don't sue me please if you're an epub expert and know about this stuff maybe you've used epub.js before i don't know you can write me a message i'm sure i will be very happy to learn more but um, nonetheless i hope that provided some insightful commentary before you go though and before i go keep in mind that i'm doing all of this this application these videos the contribution that i make to the panel all thanks to donation like it's literally the only thing that makes the my world tour. so i'm close enough to get to the goal of november but i won't reach it because november is too far close to, to the end so nonetheless i'm trying my best so if you could like throw in the donations if you haven't yet if you are able to that would be awesome you know i'm just trying my best so thanks everybody for following and uh, see you tomorrow with yet another video hopefully i will publish these videos with my progress sort of re regu regularly not every day but every time i make some progress bye